Cryptocurrency has become a global phenomenon in recent years, but there's still very much to learn about it. From its technological particulars that are still unknown to the general public, to its impact on global economy still unknown to pretty much everyone. Traditional Money versus Crypto Let's first compare cryptocurrency to traditional money. Money serves as a medium of exchange, unit of value, a way to store value. Money as a medium of exchange was conceptualized to replace the barter system, where people exchanged products they were able to make, like grains or vegetables, for different kind or products produced by other people. But it was hard to define the value of two different commodities, so money was invented as a common denominator. To a degree, cryptocurrency is already being used as a medium of exchange instead of traditional money. The advantage of crypto is that sellers and buyers can avoid bank fees through direct crypto transactions. On the other hand, companies cannot be forced to accept crypto as is the case with official state tenders like dollars. Also, cryptocurrencies can easily be exploited for illegal transactions, terrorism or money laundering. Another important function of money is to serve as unit of value and fix the value of goods and services. Cryptocurrency used for this purpose is still being avoided because of its high volatility. For example, if you sell a product for a certain amount of crypto, and the value of the currency drops substantially the next day, you end up losing a lot of value. For money to function as it is intended, it needs to have a relatively stable value that doesn't fluctuate to extremes. This might change if more people start using crypto, as now it is used by a relatively small part of the population and small changes by a few individuals can cause large ups and downs. Money can be used to store value too. You can save money and use it in the future. While the aforementioned fluctuations make crypto unreliable for storing value, many people invest in it exactly because of them, hoping that potential price skyrocketing will make them rich in the future. As a matter of fact, most people invest in crypto for this reason, which, for now, makes crypto use more similar to stock trading or gambling. Another perceived advantage of cryptocurrencies is that they aren't tied to any particular state or bank, and as such they cannot be controlled by governments, or depend on political changes. But, since crypto's underlying infrastructure lies in the physical world, cryptocurrencies are not completely independent. For example, much of the Bitcoin-related computer infrastructure is in China, and it can fall, and already is, under the influence of the Chinese government's measures. And if that infrastructure moves to other countries, as it seems to be happening, those countries' governments will almost certainly try to impose their own regulations too. Stablecoin. A special kind of crypto. One concept has recently gained popularity as a solution for rapid fluctuations of cryptocurrency value, stablecoin. Stablecoins are cryptocurrencies that have their value pegged to another asset. That other asset can be a fiat currency, another cryptocurrency, silver or gold, or practically anything. Stablecoins try to get the best of both worlds, the stable value of traditional money, and the decentralized nature of cryptocurrency. But there are caveats too. Stablecoins are even more suitable for illegal activities since they offer stable medium of exchange with little to no control of transactions from any regulatory body. Also, the concept essentially recreates a system that already exists. And since their values are tied to other assets, anything that affects those assets directly affects stablecoins too. The Hype the hype for cryptocurrencies seems to be stronger than ever, not only among investors but in popular culture too. Crypto enthusiasts and companies are trying to capitalize on the hype big time, with a recent example being this year's Super Bowl, one of the most important yearly advertising events. Crypto companies invested a lot into Super Bowl ads, trying to win over mainstream customers. One can argue they were successful. The Coinbase commercial led to a record high number of visitors on the company's website. But the ads fell short of explaining the concept of crypto to the public, or even promoting more practical uses of crypto. 
They just focused on the most basic, and the most hazardous and addictive, aspects of crypto investing. The ads were basically promoting the idea of cryptocurrency in general, which led to some commentators calling them out for simply trying to exploit people's FOMO, fear of missing out on a certain trend. This is in line with previous accusations that crypto is just another big pyramid scheme. Cryptocurrencies have long been compared to pyramid schemes, Ponzi schemes and economic bubbles such as tulip mania, dot-com bubble or housing market bubbles. Critics of this kind include Paul Krugman, winner of the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences, and Warren Buffett, famous business magnate. Simultaneously, recent news about major companies and countries taking interest into cryptocurrencies, boosted hopes of crypto enthusiasts. PayPal started accepting crypto payments and Uber might be on the way too, while Tesla changed its mind a few times. El Salvador recognized Bitcoin as legal tender and Malta is working on its mainstream usage. Recent Developments U.S. government officials and the Biden administration have increasingly expressed interest in new regulations for cryptocurrency, especially in the domain of stablecoins. New regulations will probably include measures to protect investors and facilitate tracking crypto activity for taxing purposes. Bitcoin is the leader of the crypto market and a good indicator of crypto trends. Its value was changing wildly in 2021. It hit its record high and went over $68,000 before plunging down to less than $30,000. A good example of cryptocurrency volatility. The future. Cryptocurrency is still a new financial phenomena and a speculative investment with little history one can use to make predictions. Whatever people or experts say, nobody really knows. Governments will certainly try to get more hold of the situation, either by imposing more rules or by developing their own, state-controlled cryptocurrencies. The hype will probably continue, at least for some time. One possible outcome is a big crash of the whole market, which will make a great number of people lose their investments. Another one, less grim, is a slow adoption of cryptocurrencies as mainstream media of exchange and stabilization of their values. In either case, it seems that sooner or later this trend of wild investing and overnight growth must come to a halt. If cryptocurrency is really something more than a transient phenomena, its proponents need to offer more than just get-rich-quick schemes. Decentralization and freedom from control stories sound good in theory, but will the crypto world be proof against imminent regulatory attempts from states and central banks, and at the same time avoid becoming a haven for criminal and terrorist transactions? For now, it's important to note that investment experts recommend keeping cryptocurrency investments to less than 5% of one's total portfolio, and to never invest anything one's not okay with losing. To quote Frederick Staniel, a CFP with Lifewater Wealth Management, if you were to wake one morning to find that crypto has been banned by the developed nations and it became worthless, would you be okay? So, keep those investments small and never put them above any other important financial goals like long-term saving of paying off debts. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more facts.